Hi, I'm Nick Manoilovich from Weekend at the Cottage. Welcome to Let's Build a Shed, a five-part series on how to build a 10 by 20 storage shed. Episode number one, we prepped the site, we put down our foundation, I worked with floor joists and put down the floor. Episode two, that's been the toughest one so far, uh, where we made the rafters that we're gonna be using when we put up the roof in this episode. Uh, I'll be joined by friends this weekend, so hopefully I'll have a little bit of relief from the heavy lifting, but I figure I better be open to change because I gotta incorporate three vintage windows into the plans, so there will be adjustments. There will be lots of measuring, but I feel we will have success with the process. A uh, suggestion, please subscribe to weekendatthecottage.com for the full story. Also subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can watch all the episodes back to back. Beyond that, one final reminder, never built a shed before, don't worry about it. Neither have I, but we'll learn together. Let's build a shed, yay. Here's a suggestion on a couple of things that served us well on this project, starting every day by taking off the protective covers off of building materials, wheeling out our cart of tools to set up a tool and workstation, something new I started doing, giving the tools a good wipe or brush before each day's work. For this episode, I also gave the shed floor a good sweep because my friends and I decided we're gonna be building the walls on the floor, just like I did with the trusses. A clean workspace is a happy workspace, I say. Next up, the task at hand, putting up four walls, two measuring 20 feet in length, the other two 10 feet each. After reviewing the plans, we decided to start with a long wall that's positioned as the back of the shed. It has no doors or windows, so putting it together seemed pretty straightforward. My friend Jamie was one of the first of my weekend warrior helpers to arrive, so we got to work. We started by measuring and marking seven feet, two and a half inches as the length for the 16 studs. We then used a square to draw the lines and cut them to the correct length with a miter saw. Next, we put the top and bottom plates down on the shed floor, measured the position of the studs at 16 inches on center and marked them. We put the studs in place and got to nailing. There was a lot of nailing. Last thing on this first wall build was to add the second shorter top plate complete with a four inch allowance. The two 10 foot walls will have longer top plates allowing for a butt joint making the walls secure. With this first wall good to go, Jamie attached off cuts along the back of the floor to act as temporary braces. Then with the help of more friends, we gave the wall a lift made sure it was plumb, added two additional longer two by fours as braces, and lastly, we nailed the wall into the floor. Yay. We agreed we'd continue and build the two shorter end walls so that we could place them off to the side, leaving us that floor space to put together the last 20 foot wall. The first of the two shorter walls was like the one we just built. Top and bottom plates went down, we measured where the studs would go, placed them down, hammered them into place. Note that second wall, longer top plate with those four inch overhangs, they'll eventually nestle in perfectly snug to create butt joints when the four walls are positioned. With walls one and two done, we started wall number three, the last of the shorter walls. For this one, new measurements plus less studs because this is the wall where the door will go. Above the door, we positioned a header supported on each side with trim, and then we nailed the studs to create a secure frame for the door. Same as wall two, we use two by four off cuts to measure the four inch overhangs. We moved that wall off to the side and called it a day. Lots more to do on day two. Next day, the sun was shining, birds were singing, and all my friends were so eager to help, which was great because I needed help. The final wall is the one that needed to be redesigned to accommodate the three antique windows. It all seemed pretty easy, right? Well, after lots of discussion and, uh, wait for it, an impromptu stretch class, the finest we've ever seen in this neck of the woods, we did some number and measurement crunching, we laid out the framework, cut the new measurements for studs, 
headers, trims, and then we built the final wall. When it was done, we lifted the front wall into place, squared, braced, and nailed it to the floor. We then went back and added the back wall, making sure that those butt joints worked perfectly. Last wall to go up is the one with the door. We positioned to plumb and then nailed all of the butt joints in place and hammered the four corners into place as well. With the walls up, we lifted and attached the first rafter. Next, it was onto the front of the shed where we attached and braced and carefully lifted and secured the last rafter in place. Then it was on to lifting, blocking and securing the nine roof trusses to the top plates of the walls. The trusses were attached every two feet on center and then attached to a temporary run of two by four that kept them perfectly upright, plumb and in place. Last thing for each truss and the two rafters was to secure them with hurricane ties. And after lots of thanks to my amazing friends, I sent them off for drinks and snacks while I put all the ladders and tools away. Yup, time to call it a day. So ends two very productive days of let's build a shed. Um, the walls are up, the roof trusses are in place. I've even positioned in those three antique windows just to give you a sense of the look I'm going for. Um, now that this is done, a couple of things I learned along the way, having friends here to help. I don't know how I ever could have thought of doing it without them. So having people with you to help do the heavy lifting and a lot of the work will definitely make the process a lot easier. Other things I learned, the importance of measuring. Every time we laid a stud down, every time we put something in place, having those measurements exact is always important. Working off of that plan throughout as well was really, really key. We learned about level. Uh, when I was doing the foundation. In this episode, it was all about plumb, where we're making sure the wall studs are straight. Uh, same thing with the brace on the top of the tress trusses. We want to make sure that everything is plumb and on the level. Um, beyond that, I just have to say I'm pretty exhausted. It's been a couple of very uh, long days, yet Friends are here, so you know what's gonna to happen tonight. I'm gonna to have a delicious dinner. We're gonna sit around. There may be even a couple of card games uh, that lead us into the rest of the weekend. Coming up in episode four, we'll be putting on a little bit of the plywood. I already started for the outside as well as the roofing. Uh, and then in episode five, we'll be coming back and doing all of the final details. If you're just joining us, please remember to subscribe to weekendatthecottage.com where you'll see the full story. Head to our YouTube channel where you can watch these videos again and again, especially if you're getting ready to build your own shed. Remember, if I can build it, so can you. Together, let's build a shed. Thanks for watching. Until next time.